to make a tab that comes out I will need to do it in several steps if we look at this group here it's just two different objects that have a bevel and a boss I can do it quite quickly it's a rectangle frame like so a second rectangle frame aligning to it like so I take both these shapes I change them to have a rounded or a beveled corner and we can add the size of the corner so it's rounded now with these two selected I can group them I will take the smaller tab and I will just drag it down so that there is no little kink on the side both these objects selected I will remove the stroke so I don't get a stroke I'll choose a fill color to be black at a lower percentage like so and then I'm going to use the effects with bevel and emboss and using a higher altitude lets me move the highlight so that it comes off the edge and the edge is still visible even if it's a very small color you can see that the edge has moved here and then I will say OK this is a very flexible tab because if I just double click it I can go in and edit the two shapes like so to make a small, uh, larger tab like so to make a wider tab and if I want to take the corners off on the one element that's not a problem it's very flexible so remember that uh, an effect can be either on an object or on a group and that's a big advantage here we have a, a prepared tab with some text also I want when I click the label for this tab to come out and I want when I press this X button that it's going to push the text down I also want to in this movie say that this text will be visible with a down arrow to read more and the down arrow is just a triangle that has a bevel on it and when I am on the second set I want to have the up arrow to go back to the first set and I'm not going to put the buttons inside the shape while we are trying the interactivity and how it works to start off let's have this one sliding in and I do that by selecting it from the animation I will choose to fly in from bottom this will make the tab let's call it tab 1 because I have my proxy I can see how far it's going to show and it's not going to take me all the way to the edge of the screen so with the group selected I need to change that point there so I'm just going to click on the motion path to edit it let me zoom in to do that better so I'm zooming in here let's just say that the start position is going to be locked I'm going to increase the length so now pressing the button you can see that now the tab is from here it means I need to move it down even more I will leave it at that when we have the animation we can see what is triggering the animation and at the moment it says it's triggered by on page load I turn this one off because I don't want to trigger this one when I start the page I don't need to fade this in so for the fade option I will choose none the second stage to making this is to take the label I will make it into a button and my button is this time going to trigger an animation the animation that it is going to trigger is the tab so this one is called animation play and it's going to play tab one and let's call this one show tab one this is going to be my close button this time I go in actions animation this is going to be tab one reverse and I will call this one close tab one like so we can see we have a small tab here at the bottom when I press the first button the tab shows I press the X and it disappears so it has a nice smooth feel the thing is I want this button to animate with the tab as well as the text and these scrollable buttons go into my layers and I'm going to hide off that blinking light so this is my group and I want to add these ones into my group my group I will find here 
where it's called show tab one is the normal button here close tab one is the normal button and this is my tab as a group so just the simplest way to do this to add the show and the close button as part of the group is to select both the show and the close button and I do that by holding shift down and I will move them into the tab one like so and I will have them above the two rectangles so they are visible. If we just close down the other objects so that it will be less distracting and we can test this now I'll press the label, it pulls out, I press the X and it goes down. So that's my motion. Open tab, let's put this one here. We will close the tab for the moment and we have our two polygons. This is the first text and this is the second text. So I will take the first text and the down button using the shift and I will make them into a group. I will take the second button and the text and make them into a group. What I'm going to do now is use the multi-state object so that this button is going to switch it to the next state and this button is going to switch it to the previous state. And the way I do that is I just select the two groups Window, Interactive, Object States and I will make this one into a multi-state object. This one we can call text. State 1 and state 2 is fine. I will double click on the little button, go to my buttons and forms and say go to next state and that has the action already programmed. I will select the object, go back into the object state, select state 2. There we have the up button. So I will double click to select that one and go to previous state. Let's test this now. I will play. We have the down button which takes us to page 2 the up button takes us to page one. And now that I see that the functionality is working, I can put the two texts on top of each other. Let's just put some guidelines in before I can know where they are. I'll go into my object state number one. I select the object, go into my object state number one. Command R is going to bring up my rulers, so it's going to bring my guides and I will bring a vertical guide like so. There go into my objects from my state number two. I'm going to double click to choose the text and I will shift drag it till it snaps to the guide and trying that again now. There it is. Text 2, text 1. Let's put this together with the tab. So I will activate my tab. I will take my object, which is the text. I will drag it so that it becomes the show below the show and hide in the text tab. Playing this one now again shows my label. I click on it, the label comes out, I can read my second step and you see there's nothing happening here with the steps and this can happen that it actually sometimes breaks the link but the closing works so I will have to redo my buttons again I will close that window again so going into the object states here I will go into object state number one I will go in and get the button make sure it has go to next state I can go up in my hierarchy to get hold of the object. On the object states I change to stage 2. I double click on the button to go into that one and add previous state. So let's look at this again. There we have the tab. I click on it to expand. I can use the button now to move between the two pages of text and I can close the tab like so. Start simple at first and as you master the mechanics of it, go on and explore 